The Hocking Canal was once the superhighway of its day as part of a statewide canal system that meant so much to progress in Ohio. But when people think of the Hocking Canal today, they think in terms of old photos and maps like these, dusty memories from old school books and museum collections. But they fail to realize just how important the canal was to growing our economy and to opening up transportation of goods and people at a time when roads in the state were little more than passed pathways barely suitable for people, animals, and wagons. The canal waterways made moving bulk goods possible for the first time and provided a much easier means of transportation for people to and from the state and our region. There were two major canals in Ohio. The Ohio and Erie Canal ran from Cleveland to Portsmouth, and the Miami and Erie Canal ran from Toledo to Cincinnati. When the Lancaster Lateral Canal was built, it joined the Ohio and Erie Canal in Carroll, Ohio, and this was that connecting point, with the Ohio and Erie Canal coming down from the Buckeye Lake area to the northeast and then continuing to the west toward Canal Winchester and Lockbourne before turning south toward the Ohio River. It was right here that the Lancaster Lateral Canal joined the Ohio and Erie Canal. This would later become the head end of the Hocking Canal. Join us as we investigate what remains of the Hocking Canal today and what it meant to the Hocking Valley and all of southeastern Ohio. The Hocking Canal began life as the Lancaster Lateral Canal, running from Carroll to Lancaster before later being extended on to Athens. Through Lancaster, the Hocking Canal roughly followed the same route as present-day Memorial Drive. I'm Tom O'Grady and I'm with the Southeast Ohio History Center. The Hawkins Valley Canal is a, uh, a feeder canal to the Ohio Canal system. The Ohio Erie Canal was the first canal in Ohio and it was uh, initiated on the 4th of July in, in 1825 up in Hebron, Ohio. Hebron is now today on, on what's called the National Road and it's also where the National Road of 1825 intersected the Ohio Erie Canal started in 1825. And the Ohio Erie Canal ran from uh, Cleveland, Ohio on Lake Erie down to Portsmouth, Ohio on the uh, Ohio River. And it, it followed streams, it followed the Cuyahoga River and then crossed over Summit County area and locked its way down into the Tuscaroras River Valley and then followed that to the Muskingum, crossed the Muskingum and uh, over toward Buckeye Lake. Buckeye Lake used to be a big uh, swamp 
called it the Great Buffalo Swamp, and they dammed it up to make a feeder lake out of it to feed the canal system north and south. And then that canal came down past Lancaster, and it went over to Circleville, across the Scioto River, and then headed down along the Scioto River to Portsmouth. Well, some businessmen in Lancaster were disappointed that the canal didn't come through Lancaster. Uh, it passed a few miles north of there, so they organized uh, an, uh, an effort called the Lancaster Lateral Canal. And I think that was around 1829 or thereabouts. And they ex made a, a feeder canal that went from Lancaster up to the village of uh, Carroll, Ohio, and linked into the Ohio Erie Canal. And after they did that, the state of Ohio decided to extend that canal down to Athens, Ohio, along the Hocking River. And so that became known as the Hocking Valley Canal. And it goes from Lancaster down to Sugar Grove, Logan, came through Haydenville, Nelsonville, and then on down to uh, Chansey and then in, into Athens where it stopped. They never followed the uh, Hocking Valley down to the Ohio River. So it stopped in Athens. There was a large basin there where where boats would um, overwinter sometimes and or turn around to head back up the canal. And along that basin there was a number of industries that developed. And so the Hocking Canal really opened up southeast Ohio basically to the world's economy. So right now we're standing in the Canal Way. The Canal Way, uh, the, when uh, the state of Ohio passed the law to build the canal, the canal had very specific requirements it had to be a minimum of four feet in depth. It could be deeper. It had to be a minimum of 40 feet in width at the top, 20 some feet in width uh, at the bottom. And then the tow path on one side and a heel, heel path on the other. Now we think of toe and heel like part of a foot, but the tow path was a T-O-W, spelled T-O-W, not T-O-E. And uh, that was where the livestock that were pulling the canal boats would walk along. The canals ran from the springtime after the thaw, when the, when the canals had, when the ice had melted on the canals, until it froze up again. So the canals were always shut down in the winter time. And if there was a drought in the summer, that would slow down the movement of traffic on the canals. In here, you see some remains of some old sandstone blocks. And I'm not 100% sure of the purpose of that, but in many locks you can see where they had built some sort of a superstructure to allow overflow of the water. Possibly when there had been big rains and the canal might be flooding, they, they couldn't back up all the water behind it, so they had to allow some water to pass by at certain times. So this section of the canal, uh, we were just looking at the lock, which is in that direction and the boats would come through and that, that little swale there is the channel of the canal going over the creek. If you see the large sycamore tree off to the right, that tree is growing along the bank of a small stream and beneath this, beneath this trough is a, is a big stone arch under which that stream flows. So that would be a, a, a culvert and you can see they built a large sandstone structure that allows the stream to go beneath and then the canal crosses over the top of it. Now that we know where the Hocking Canal began and a little about how it worked, let's fly on down the old Hocking Canal channel and see what we can find. Here below us, just east of Lancaster, we find canal lock number eight, known either as Reams or Clark's Lock. Let's go down and take a closer look.
flying further southeast. We fly over Sugar Grove, and just to our right is the location of the Old Sharps Quarry, a supplier of sandstone for the canal. Between Sugar Grove and Millville, now known as Rockbridge, we find canal locks 11 and 12. Let's check them out. I'm Steve Flegel. For those of you who don't know me, I'm with AOA, Appalachia Ohio Alliance. Uh, we have a president here, Al, Al Fader, Susan Clay with this. And so just to be clear, you know, AOA is, is working to conserve the locks in the canal or sections of it for local heritage purposes and for public access and public benefit. So we're working at all sections of the canal, Athens County, Hocking County, Fairfield County. Okay, we'll look at it and then we're going to go this way. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Right here. I'm just going to take another one. I think I took pictures last time. I'm Dave Meyer, the author of 56 Miles Into the Hills, a book I wrote several years ago about the Hocking Canal. The lock that we're at here is called the Sheep Pen Lock. The story behind that is that uh, all these locks were built by individual contractors before the canal was opened, obviously. And this particular lock uh, had, was sitting here open and a local farmer used it to uh, keep his sheep in uh, when, while he was uh, uh, waiting to move them. So it got the name of Sheep Pen Lock. At some points along the Hocking Canal, the canal would use the Hocking River instead of digging a new canal channel. As we fly east from Lock 12, Sheep's Pen, we find one of those locations below us, and we can still easily see where the canal channel entered the Hocking River. As we fly on toward Enterprise and Logan, we fly over a section of the old canal route where the canal rejoined the Hocking River, saving a lot of construction work and man hours. You have to remember that there were no backhoes or caterpillars or anything in those days. So everything was done by hand and with oxen. Uh, the, all, all the digging was done by hand and was very labor intensive. And then uh, the uh, large amounts of earth that were taken out of the lock pit were then moved by oxen to a remote site.
between Enterprise and Logan, at a point where the canal ran in the river channel, we found the location of this iconic photo. The photo shows a canal boat in front of a towpath bridge that spanned a gully where the towpath had been cut into the rock of the river bank. And to our surprise, we found more than that. Here we found carvings cut into the sandstone wall on the towpath, some very professional indeed. And we found holes in the rock where that bridge structure once stood. Approaching Logan, we head over the point where the canal once again left the Hocking River Channel to make its own way through town. As we explore the route that the Hocking Canal took through Logan, we'll start on the west side of town with the first business that it passed located right about here, near the current intersection of West Hunter Street and West Main Street. This was the location of the Logan Furnace Company, which made charcoal and also had a foundry. Moving a bit further east, the canal crossed right here at Gallagher Avenue, just north of where the washboard factory is today. Now, the rear section on our left of the feed store on Main Street would have faced the canal. This is the McCourtney House on Main Street, which dates back to at least 1847 and served as a tavern and in during the canal era. The canal began a turn to the south here, with what appears to be part of the old canal channel still visible to our left. And the building ahead of us here is very interesting. It is one of two houses said to be built from old canal boats. These two structures sit almost directly in the old canal channel. Both of these buildings face 2nd Street, and it was here that an early Logan Cemetery blocked the canal right-of-way. It is written that the remains from the cemetery were carefully removed from their original graves, wrapped in muslin, and then reburied here in the old Logan Cemetery across North Market Street from St. John's Church. After crossing present-day Front Street near the south end of High Street, the canal turned to the east to run parallel and to the south of Front Street. Surprisingly, the old canal channel is still here, in these trees where it made its turn to the east. As we walk further into the tree line, we find ourselves standing on the south wall of the old canal channel. And as we pan the camera to the east, the outline of the old canal channel can clearly be seen. And note that the canal wall that we are standing on is covered with brick. My name is B.J. King. Uh, I was involved with the King Lumber Company uh, in this building for 43 years. My dad came to Logan 100 years ago this year. Jim Bob King uh, ran the King Lumber Company 
and he came down from Marion, Ohio, exactly 100 years ago this year, and started at the uh, lumber company. It was a lumber company until 2013, and I, uh, I closed the lumber yard in 2013 because of the big competition, the big boxes. Right now, I'm standing where the Hawking Canal actually was, and in the winter time, it would freeze, and they would come and cut blocks of ice, 8, 10, 12 inches in thickness, and the blocks of ice would be taken uptown. I just learned today that there were tunnels that they actually took to some of the ice houses. But right where I'm standing is fill, and they filled in the canal after the railroad put the Hawking Canal out of business. The canal boats uh, would come in and dock right next to the woolen mill. Uh, they would bring in raw wool from the probably three or four county area, and then they processed the raw wool here. They turned it into blankets and, and other clothing, and I'm sure uh, they were also shipped out at that time by the canal boats. But the interesting thing is, I'm standing right in the middle of the canal. The woolen mill was created around 1846 in Howe's Ohio his, Historic uh, Book. It only mentioned three industries in Logan. One is the Wellman Flour Mill, right next to us, which was on the Hawking Canal the woolen mill here, and the canal is right over here to my right. Uh, the water was 25 feet from where I'm standing. The canal boats would pull up to the woolen mill here and unload raw wool. During the Civil War, they had 10 employees. They were making wool blankets and, and selling them to the public and also uh, for the men of the Civil War, and also uh, woolen pants for the Union Army. Uh, a few years ago, I gave to the Historical Society a round bell that the canal people, the, when the canal boats were pulling in, there were 10 employees, and they would ring the bell to uh, so the employees knew that there was a canal boat coming in. When I started at the lumber yard uh, at 12 years old, we used that canal, old canal bell, which there was a window right up here, right above the, the brick, uh, was a window, and the, and the old canal bell that hung there, we still used, we didn't have uh, radios, we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have any type of communication. So my dad was one ring on the bell. Don Myers, who was the manager at the King Lumber Company for 42 years, he had two rings. And being in the family, I had three rings. And that's if we were way over in other parts of the lumber yard, that's how we communicated. When the bell rang three times, I had to run over here and wait on a customer or jump on a forklift or do something. Uh, but that's how we communicated with that actual old canal bell and the historical society uh, has it today. During the canal days, there was an ice cream shop right over here which then used to be uh, Tom West's car wash. One more interesting fact, right behind me, which used to be Kevin's 
service station, the filling station, okay, on the Hocking Canal, the Hocking Canal would have gone right behind this picture, okay, of the J.C. Morgan Company. It was a breeding stable and sales stable, but it was also right on the Hocking Canal, which went right behind Kevin's service station. Coming to the east end of Logan, the Hocking Canal crossed this culvert that allowed Old Town Creek to pass under the canal. Notice the wood that lines the bottom of the creek going through the culvert. Apparently a part of the original construction process, it is incredible that the wood is still here more than 170 years later. Continuing east out of Logan, the Hocking Canal more or less followed the current path of old Route 33 and the railroad tracks as it headed toward Haydenville, moving deeper into the clay and coal mining regions of southeastern Ohio. As the canal boats went up the canal, they sold coal to people along the canal and in, particularly in uh, Lancaster uh, quite a bit of coal was sold and uh, even in the winter months w what the canal boat owners would do is they would fill up their hold on the canal boat and sell it off to keep themselves uh, in food products and so on. Uh, and sell it to locally to people wherever they, what they call iced in, wherever, wherever they stayed for the winter. Uh, most blacksmiths preferred the hard coal. The coal that came from Southern Ohio was a soft coal. And so uh, the, the, to work iron and steel, you needed uh, uh, to put out a lot of heat. So they used the hard coal from Northern Ohio, mostly. Uh, but uh, coal was used for heating, for s making steam, which of course was very popular in the uh, latter part of the 1800s uh, to operate mills and so on. So uh, uh, there was a lot of places to sell uh, the soft coal of Southern Ohio. After passing Canal Lock Number 17, the Hocking Canal continued through Haydenville. Here, across from where the Haydenville School once stood, the canal channel is still visible. These homes to our right were later built in the old canal channel itself. With the canal heading toward the old Haydenville brick plant, where the canal turned slightly left. Here we see the canal running across from the old company store and the hotel. Moving on to the east from Haydenville, the Hocking Canal Channel can still be seen here, where it ran toward lock number 18 at Laurel Run.
part of Block 18 can still be seen under Laurel Run Road. Moving further east, we see below us a westbound steam train running alongside the old Hocking Canal Channel back toward Laurel Run Lock 18. The railroads would ultimately bring the canal era in Ohio to an end by offering higher speeds and year-round operations. On the east side of Hocking County, between Haydenville and Nelsonville, Lock 19 still stands at what is now known as Johnny Appleseed Park. Another Part of transportation that occurred on the Hocking Canal was that of transporting people. Uh, people were transported usually for the most part until uh, into the uh, 1860s uh, when the railroad started to take away that uh, passenger travel. Uh, passengers were transported on what were called packet boats uh, these were a boat that had a uh, cabin uh, on the top of it, and uh, it, they had a place to eat in there. You could uh, dine on your travels. Packet boats stopped along the way at Lancaster uh, and other uh, small towns along the canal, and uh, picked up or let off passengers. Uh, most of the time, most of the passengers traveled from Columbus all the way to the destination in Nelsonville or uh, Athens. Reaching the Hocking Athens County line did not mean the end of the Hocking Canal. The canal continued on into Athens County, running to Nelsonville, and eventually on to Chansey and into Athens, where it ended, never continuing on to the southeast to reach the Ohio River. Here, the old Hocking Canal would have roughly been alongside of what is now Old Route 33 and the Hocking River. Canal Street, the main street through Nelsonville today, was indeed once the Hocking Canal Channel. Sadly, little remains of the Hocking Canal in Nelsonville, except for the sandstone canal blocks that are now used as seating in Crabtree Field. And the Pidcock Glass Building on East Canal Street, that is reported to be the last remaining canal era structure along the old canal route in Nelsonville. During the Civil War, 10 canal boats were burned in Nelsonville by Morgan's Raiders on July 22, 1863. Reportedly, John Hunt Morgan spared an 11th boat when he discovered that it was actually a houseboat. Morgan's raiders took supplies and traded horses and then quickly left Nelsonville. It was up and down the valley, Morgan's raiders on the way. 
for they're headed north toward Nelson Bell and they'll be here any day. Well, we heard they all were killers and they'll burn and loot your town. Hide your horses and your women when more and the raiders come around. As the Hocking Canal left Nelsonville and headed toward Chansey and Athens, it followed along what is now Elm Rock Road, crossing over the current Route 33 here, near the Movies 10 exit, and turned to head east toward Chansey, tracking along almost in line with the back of the Movies 10 building. Here we are flying almost directly over the path of the old Hocking Canal Channel. Here, between Nelsonville and Chansey, the Hocking Canal basically followed much the same route as does current U.S. Route 33. Passing just to the south of Chansey, the canal turned toward Athens, heading around the hill along what is now River Road and the bike path. We're along the canal here between Athens and Chansey. And this is just a section of the canal that there hasn't been any development around here for a hundred years or better. The railroad goes by now following the route of the old canal, but you can still see the, the canals holding water along some of these sections here, at least during certain parts of the year. And not far up here, the canal got real narrow and they had a lock in it. And so it got narrowed down to about 15 feet but you can see it always had to be a minimum of 40 feet wide. And this is a kind of good example of, of that. This is an average width of the canals through here.
Well, this is the last remnant of the Hocking Valley lock system as we approach Athens from up northward. And this is generally known as the Armitage Lock. It's a guard lock. It's, it's headed toward the Hocking River, which is over in this direction. On the other side of the Hocking River is the city of Athens. So canal boats over here had to get across the Hocking River. So they built a dam in the Hocking River with giant trees that they staked into the river with large iron stakes and backed up the Hocking River and made a lake pool behind the dam. And then boats would enter this lock, a guard lock, and they would raise or lower the boat to the level of the river. And then the boat would go out on the river, go downstream a little ways, and then go out into a guard lock on the far side, and then continue on into the city of Athens and head toward the terminus of the canal. This is the remnants of the Armitage Lock. This is where the uh, lock gates were here. And then this is the center of the lock where the boats would go through. I believe we talked before the locks were had to be a minimum of 15 feet wide and 90 feet long so that boats any bigger than that couldn't get through them. And this one being so close to the city of Athens, and this end of the canal was shut down in the 1870s. A number of floods on the Hocking River destroyed pieces of the canal, and so from Nelsonville to Athens was shut down after parts of it after the 1874 flood and then a little later after that. And so they were still building large buildings with sandstone foundations in the late 1800s and early 1900s. And if you needed large sandstone blocks for a foundation, it was oftentimes a lot easier to go to an abandoned lock and borrow stones from there and then take them into town and build your building on top of lock blocks. And so most of this lock has been scavenged. Parts of it remain. So at this point, the canal has recently crossed the river, made a short a bit of a turn here, and now it's headed toward downtown Athens. It's headed toward the terminus of the, uh, and the, and the, uh, the canal basin at the end of the line. And this is now, the canal bed is underneath this road, and this road defines the very end of the Athens County Fairgrounds, which is on the other side of this fence and all this vegetation and it hits Union Street up there at a very much different angle than all the other streets that, that come off of West Union Street. We are in Athens uh, at the terminus of the Hocking Valley Canal, which originally started as the Lancaster Lateral Canal running from uh, Carroll, Ohio down to Lancaster. And then after that section was built, the state extended it on down to Athens, but didn't go any further. So it ended here in Athens. Uh, we are near behind the uh, Union Depot out on the west side of Athens. The railroad came in much of the same route. And so this was the Athens Basin, or the terminus of the canal. And it was a large basin that had warehouses and a little bit of factory and industrial section of town surrounding it. And boats would come down here and load or unload their goods and then turn around and head back up the canal. 
during the winter, of course, when the canal shut down, the terminus, this, this basin here would be a place where boats would overwinter. After the canal went out of business, this was still the end of town where the railroads came in and, and there was an industrial nature to this section of town. So it grew up as a bit of an industrial area. Uh, as late as the early 1980s, this section where we're at now had turned into a, a junkyard or scrapyard. There were a lot of railroad uh, lines running through here. And at some point that was all cleared out for a, a redevelopment project that's now known as the station the station project area and they have small businesses here where the buildings are uh, reflective of the railroad era and some of these uh, apartment buildings are supposed to reflect a little bit of the architecture of the uh, Athens Depot, the Union Depot. The Hocking Canal, in its day, as part of the Ohio Canal System, helped to open up travel and commerce to and from southeastern Ohio. And, in fact, it helped to open up Ohio business to the eastern United States and beyond. The railroads helped to bring an end to the canal era, with most traces of the old canals being erased by development projects. The canals were filled in, and much of the stonework from the old locks were reused for other purposes. Fortunately, now there are efforts underway to protect and conserve what little remains of the canal system today. We applaud those efforts. We stand on the shoulders of those who dreamed of and built the Ohio Canal System back in the 1800s, including our own Hocking Canal that served southeastern Ohio. We owe them much for laying the foundations of the transportation systems that we use today. When the canal boats were coming, uh, they would ring this bell to let the workers, they had 10 workers at that time, and they would ring the bell to let the workers know that there was a canal boat coming. 